Hello and welcome back to the European coverage of the SPL. I'm going to be your host here for this set, Toli, and I'm joined here by another T, Taco. How are you feeling about the last set? I don't want to talk about it, man, just as much as probably Enix doesn't want to remember that it happened. That was, I'm smiling now, but that that's heartbreaking right there. Like, I I really thought for a second that Enix was going to clutch it out, and it, it just hurts to see sometimes. Well, that was an epic set, but moving forward, we're going to have Poppies against Burrito, two of these Challenger Cup teams that's struggled quite a bit thus far, but it's been used kind of like of a learning ground, I feel like. It, it's really been a developmental period for both of these teams, and you could definitely tell throughout this split, especially, that these teams have actually been progressing. I mean, they're both fresh out of the relegations, so this is really just their learning point, but because of how things have actually played out and elevates to carrying that 2-0 victory earlier today it is actually going to be these two teams again proving whether or not they'll be able to come out of relegations yet again it's still all about the important seeding now there's two points on the side of poppies no points quite yet for burrito but that could change today you never really know with some of these epic games but as we head into game, uh, picks and bands for game number one here it's going to be interesting to see the strategies that these two teams develop as it progresses because because right now, I would use this as an experimentation thing more than anything else. I, I think that an experimental phase is certainly not out of question for either of these teams. I do feel as though both of them bring a fairly aggressive play style, particularly in the jungle role from either side. So I would really imagine just both of these junglers trying to opt for the more aggressive route. So far, Morgan being banned away from the Poppies. Osiris, your standard ban of the Osiris bully soul laner. Wouldn't be surprised if Burrito tried to ban away that Bologna to complement that. But Morgan banned from the Poppies. You could tell that that's most likely a target ban if they're willing to eliminate it right off the bat. Plus, it's just Morgan's had so much success throughout this split alone. I believe she's only lost one game so far. Shoutouts to NA. And uh, it, overall, though, it, it's a very favored pick in EU. And I, I do believe that both either side really just wouldn't want to deal with that. Sometimes that leads me to believe that they're trying to go for a specific jungle pick that they don't want Burrito to get for themselves, specifically either Hunbats or Sarkat. Normally, whenever we see one of those two gods, the other team seems to just pick up the Morrigan and then kind of run wild on the enemy soul lane. But Huyi and Ganesha banned away, trying to take away some options from the duel. And Kerno's first pick. Tell me about <laughs> why this is so highly prioritized. I mean, Kerno is just an incredibly strong hunter. And when you don't have to worry about Huyi being your opposition, then you're allowed a little bit more freedom and flexibility in the laning phase. Just because Huyi can have a tendency to bully out a Kern simply because of his kit in comparison, he doesn't really have as much poke potential. And that's what you're looking for with Kern. Seoul and Sun Wukong for Burrito Esports now trying to really get some safe long distance poke battle here. But Bologna wasn't banned, so it's going to be picked up by the Poppies. Going to have some early aggressive options here between both the dual lane and Seoul lane from that Kernos and Bologna. But surprisingly, <laughs> oh, Freya, is this middle? I, I think that this might be Kern mid instead and Freya in the in the dual lane. Okay. It, it could also potentially just be a Freya middle, although I I'd really just anticipate that Frey will be played by Warchi. I'll, I think it's interesting as well that Burrito opted for the Sun Wukong as opposed to the Bologna, so they clearly have a little bit more value in that pick. So is Frey just too unsafe, which is why we haven't seen it too much here? Because normally uh, in Season 4, there's been a lot of increase in terms of the magical damaging items, so you would think this late game goddess would be played more, no? Uh, I mean, but the thing about Freya is that it's still kind of concerning because her laning initially is just so weak. Her, her health pool is very small. She has a very difficult time clearing safely. You have to pair her along with a very strong clearing support. And, and it's evident the Poppies are probably going to offer that direction. It's just Burrito with the Jing Wei pick. This was a classic matchup back in Season 2 where anytime you saw Freya and Jing Wei wasn't banned, you'd usually go one or the other. Speaking of safety, Jing Wei is one of the safest hunters you could ever want in that dual lane. Sobek with the Willish combination for Poppies, really trying to get off that early engagement here. And looking against Burrito's composition, I feel like that's specifically targeted towards the Jing Wei, trying to snatch her out of the air. I think there's going to be a lot of target focus 
space into that duo lane on the side of the poppies. It's going to be incredibly easy as well as far as setup is concerned, just because Sobeka Wheelish is like one of the most classic compositions of all time. And with this Geb last pick for Burrito, really safe option here. Now Nemesis has even more of an easy time to be able to dive that backline. Not only is she going to be able to shield herself, but relying on that Geb shield. So it's going to be really safe option here for Johnny to be able to look for those plays as we head into the first game here. These two challenger teams wanting to really battle against each other for that seeding towards relegations. I mean, when you think about it, uh, Poppies are just looking to secure more wins because they, they also just want to show that they're a strong team. Burrito are looking to not be Sanguine 2.0. They, they don't want to finish out the split without any wins. So, of course, you can anticipate that they're trying to draft to their team strengths. And I think picking out this Geb Nemesis combination will actually work out very well because they have that survivability factor and a little bit of early game to compensate for it. Whether it's going to be Sanguine 2.0 or the Nor or the European Flashpoint, Burrito are having a relatively standard safe composition here compared to last time that they usually go for some of these different styles, but trying to battle against a very early aggressive a Willish from Dalo. This is one of his comfort picks that he really relies on to get this early lead. And I, I think that Dalo is also just playing this as a comfort pick on the Awelish just because it's something that he's so accustomed to. And when you know a god so well and, and it's something that your team is accustomed to running, it's just safer to stick with it. Already seeing a speed buff invade from both sides. Shawnee double dashing away into safety of that melee. Nice little stellar burst just to slow Kree down. And with that poke that he took in that mid wave, it's going to allow Sibby some more freedom in that solo lane, which is not normally common for a Sun Kong against a Bologna. It was also really smart recognition by Burrito there, immediately able to tell that Poppies were looking to invade their jungle. So, okay, fine, we'll just take your speed buff off the table. And not only that, now he's going to have that slight lane advantage to be able to secure his own blue buff while he's waiting for the next wave, going to hit level three. And it's very important that a Sun Kong has a small timing window like this to get a slight edge, but no edge for a few suffice. He gets plucked into a little bit of poke. With that rollout being caught by the Banish, though, from Warchi, he's looking to play all aggressive here. He's got the 2 1 proc that's chunking away at his health, and I believe that the cooldowns are going to be up in time. Nice tail whip from Draco Marino. First blood for the Sobek. Normally, you want to be able to save that for your Hunter, but Warchi's second ability was not going to last forever, and that was a great use of not using the 2 1 combination because it is actually splashing. Onto the support there, we saw Kaspainify trying to body block some of those shots, but you can't block those AoE in hands. It was just a really well timed and also better safe than sorry. He might have had his shield up in time in order to protect himself. And sometimes all you need is that little boost of extra health in order to make it safely underneath your tower. Not only that, now you're putting Warchi on this Freya in a great spot trying to transition out of this early game. And a Freya that gets into that mid to late game safely or with a kill or an assist. Now you're looking for a really good time if you're on the side of the poppies. Burrito, though, need to figure out ways to not allow that to happen ever again. It was probably best case scenario though for Warchi to be facing off against this Geb duo lane just because Geb is probably one of the worst supports as far as early game is concerned. He has a really difficult time if he's not with a super aggressive hunter as far as clear is concerned. And Freya and Sobek is not the greatest clearing lane either, so they're really just able to stalemate it and having the slight edge is always just that little safety net. So both hunters went for the Bumba's mask trying to start off their red and their purple here. Do, would you have rather seen some sort of early kind of aggression in the lane from Kaspainify and Fusify, trying to clear the wave and then look for the invade? I don't think there's anything wrong with going Boombas here, especially considering that Jingwei loves to collect back harpies off cooldown, and so it's going to prevent the Jingwei from coming back into lane poked out. And the same thing could be said for the Freya. Freya is going to be able to secure that purple and red buff on her own without having to worry with the health pull being drastically reduced. In the mid lane, a little bit of action here. Finding a pull, forcing the beads out of Johnny. He should be relatively safe after the double dash. Not going to find the pluck there either from Draco Marino to disrupt that. And a small win here coming out of the poppies. They force the beads. A, a lot of patience on the side of Johnny to not immediately look to dash after being plucked by the Awila. She kind of could tell that Dela was trying to find him. But now my saying can't be said. He's going to go ahead and take a spill anyway. And nothing that Death Panther does can save him. Great play coming out of the poppies. Finding their second kill. Invading that speed buff. Not going to find it quite yet. Even forcing out the ultimate from Sibi. Not a great spot for the Sun Wukong. Despite getting a slight lead with his own blue buff earlier on. 
trying to transition and now without a teleport, it gives a slight edge to Kareed to be able to push this wave under the tower, denying very important gold and experience. I think Sibby's main concern here is the fact that his blue buff is going to be spawning shortly. So if Creed decides to take a glance into that blue pit and see that that blue is actually available, he might just look to solo invade it. So unfortunate for Johnny. His speed buff was actually confirmed for his own team, but he just barely missed it from respawning, trying to double dash to get there a little bit quicker. But now with that death onto Sibi, without that teleport, well, not the death, but the almost near death, the blue buff will go in the way of Creed. Great play coming out of the Bologna. And already Draco trying to catch off Sibi from his dash away in the 72 transformations. Lucky for him. I, I don't think they would have had a whole lot of kill potential, but Sibi didn't have his ultimate, so the possibility is always there. Poppies are just min-maxing so well, taking whatever they can get away with. Obviously, the teleport being down on Sibi gives Creed enough time to be able to get the blue buff. Draco Marino is there just in case. And meanwhile, Dalo is securing his own blue buff, so Poppies all over the map, establishing a little bit of a 1,000 goalie without any towers or goal theories puts them in a nice spot to be able to try to look for this next speed buff invade in about a minute and a half. The the huge thing here for the poppies is Dalo needs to come up big on this Awilish early on because as the game progresses, it's going to become increasingly difficult for the poppies to try and pick off members from Burrito just because of how late game oriented this draft can be. It's going to seem that Draco Marino is going to follow Dalo around everywhere in the jungle trying to get off that combination. You're really looking for the pluck or the tail flip to be able to set up that Awilish ultimate. If you're on the side of Burrito, you're going to need to be able to spot that rotation out. And I'm not seeing too many wards from them as they're going to try to maybe get ganked on the left. Now, they were, they were posturing as if they were going <laughs> to gank on the left, but I think they just dropped a ward. I, I think they just wanted to see if they could find the pick in the mid lane just in case Death Panther and Johnny stepped up a little bit too far, then very easily just collapse on them between those three. But well, luckily for Burrito, they kind of tell something's up, everybody's missing. That's usually the go-to sign that they're probably about to get ganked. So Oho Boom here, playing this Kurnos middle, what does he really bring to the early game? Kern is just fairly strong as far as boxing is concerned early on, and he's got excellent poke potential. Having the farm in mid lane also is surprisingly safe for him because he isn't going to have to worry so much about these ganks from Johnny and Fusify. You're not really that concerned about a Nemesis Geb early on, so as a Kern, you kind of just get a free farm. I also look at it in terms of the physical hunter versus the magical mage matchup, where sometimes you might be forcing that mage into the dynasty plate helmet sometimes, really trying to limit their glass cannon potential, taking away some of their damage. Now, granted, it still has some damage with the penetration and all that, but it's certainly no dual morb that you're thinking about going, right? I think that would hurt Dalo more than anything, though, just because you know, Wheelish kind of relies on these mages to be super squishy early game. That's when a Wheelish wants to take advantage of gods the most, just because the feather step chunks so heavily. So with the dynasty played him, it might provide Death Panther the survivability that you wouldn't necessarily want between protections and just the disapparate. In the solo lane, still a little bit of more boxing potential here between Sibi and Kareed. And this is the one unfortunate thing for a Sun Wukong before he finishes off that Gladiator Shield. He's not able to really win these exchanges quite yet. Actually went into the Tier 1 here of the Breastplate of Valor since it's only about 500 to 550 gold. And now working on to is that Gladiator Shield. I think the scary part here for Burrito, if anything, is the fact that Warchi's getting so much free farm on this Freya. Freya is probably one of the primary gods in the game you never want to permit to have free farm. It's just that Johnny can't really afford to gank him right now. Right. If you see any late game god, it's like, all right, prevent that god from getting to the late game. You're looking at Artemis, you're looking at Shibalanke, then the magical side, obviously, Kronos, Freya, and even the soul at times could provide quite a bit of a nuisance. So far, Death Panther slightly behind Oho boom in the mid lane, but rather that in the hunter position, Warchi is just quietly farming away in Caspainify, trying to mitigate some of that magical power by going for the Ironwood Bow instead. And I think that this is more in favor for the Poppies because they still have Oho Boom. So if Caspainify is to try and take up a boxing match with Oho Boom, he's going to be able to it, it take a decent chunk of his health away, if not solo him. This is what's so beautiful about Freya. She alone can stop gold here attempts with one whoop just like that. The way the AI works, it kind of just resets the targeter because there's nobody in that little circle, and therefore gold here is just going to continue to slumber away. Briador are definitely going to need to be a little bit more careful as far as not stacking on top of each other, but 
even either way, it, it's still, like you said, very difficult to just get in there cleanly. Same thing goes with Xing Wei, though, if you're looking for a persistent gust there. Now, it's not going to reset the gold here because it's considered a knockup, not a banish. However, it could potentially knock you out of the circle if you're trying to backpedal. And, I mean, that's always a concerning factor, too, just because the ability does decent enough damage to where there's also a steal factor involved. Not really too much action as both teams are still feeling each other out. We've seen two kills from the poppies and uh, numerous amounts of invades, but with this 2,000 goal lead, it seems that they're kind of slowing things down, not wanting to overstep their boundaries. Do you think this is uh, like a mental defensive thing? I mean, you oh, said not wanting to overstep though. their boundaries, and it's already going to be aggression onto Death Panther yet again. Ultimate forced out of Yusufi just to try and save the life of his mid laner, but it's going to be to no avail. Johnny just trying to get out now. He's 1 HP, and the ult from Oho Boom, not even. Enough. Wild Hunt just not on the mark, unfortunately. Rotation from Kispainify trying to clean somebody up after this long engagement. Even a teleport in the middle lane, finding the knockup on Oho Boom. Double knockup from Fusify even as the speed buff is going to get started up here. Kispainify trying to chase it down with the ultimate. Not going to be enough though, but Sibi's going to try to chase this one down. There's no way he gets away from Sibi unless the ultimate from Creed saves his life. Sibi trying to chase down Oho Boom still. Looking for the 72 transformations, but the knockup from Daylo, this peel is is insane. Great positioning here coming out of Poppy's, making sure that nobody dies. However, meanwhile, with the rotation from Caspain of on the right side, this leaves more free farm for this Freya that's just quietly positioning herself to a great spot in this mid game. Already finishing off this Bancroft's talent puts her in this w weird spot where it's like you're trying to box people out and then you want to take damage. So that way, when you do escape with that Valkyrie's discretion, you just deal so much more in return. Oh, boom, should have been punished there so heavily for that aggressive of routing that he took going up and into the jungle of Burrito before wrapping around to that speed buff just kind of incredibly lucky that his team was there to follow him up. I think that he knew that his team was right there. They were stealing away the enemy speed buff, so he's like, all right, I'm going to try to linger around closer there. Like, all right, my team's doing speed. My team's doing speed. All right, guys, help, 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 help. <laughs> Finally help, been able to help out that middle Kernanos. And Poppies, despite all the offensive tactics that they've had, they still are showing signs that they can still play defensively when they need to. And I mean, it was all around just really wonderful, appealing gameplay from Dalo and Creed. If it hadn't been for the ultimate from Creed, I, Dalo, I, I think that Ohoboom would have certainly died. And that's what's the difference here between a challenger team and an SPL team, right? Anyone can make some offensive plays 1v1, such as we're seeing here in the dual lane in a 1v1, but it's about trusting your teammates and relying on each other to be able to protect one another or aggress with each other. And an interesting factor here is that Warchi actually opted to go for the Bancroft's second item, immediately wanting that power spike online for the Freya, as opposed to the ever so popular Fatalis that we usually tend to see on her, just because she's got those gumball auto attacks. And I mean, they take up half your screen, so having Fatalis is always wonderful on Freya. Now, granted, it did receive a little bit of a nerf with the gold spike. Do you think that's why we're seeing it specifically from Warchi? I, I don't think, believe that that's the reason. I think that he just valued having the defensive route. And speaking of the defensive route, Sibi having to ult defensively there to get away from Kareed. So that's a win-win for the Poppy solo winner. But going back into the Warchi discussion here, yeah, attack speed is definitely a really good option for the Freya that wants to be able to get off as many gumball drops as possible. But I think it's more about trying to get off the damage from the Valkyrie's discretion. If Warchi ever gets too low enough, having to retreat with that ultimate and then trying to deal the damage back in return. Sometimes people can kind of just forget how much damage Freya's ultimate can actually deal. I mean, it's a it's a mage ult, essentially. It, it still deals the damage of a mage and it's a very safe escape route. So if a team fight's breaking out and your team's on the better end of it, feel free to just drop that by all means and you'll deal a significant amount of damage. Speaking of team fights breaking out, Poppies are positioning themselves for another goal or a speed buff invade, but not finding the knockup through the wall. Instead, Oho Boom is going to get some pot shots off in this mid lane, getting the tower to half health. Fusify blinking in, but it's only going to force the beads at Oho Boom. Unfortunately for the rest of Burrito, I don't think they were quite close enough, and Johnny didn't seem like he wanted to expend his ultimate 
onto Oho Boom to try and lock that one down. Small little victory here. That beats is going to last a little bit longer than the beats ultimate from Fusify. The, bl the pluck here into another pull onto Johnny. The Nemesis Shield buying him a little bit of time, but lurking in the waters. Should be able to clean this one up. No, Ooh. he gets away yet again with 1% health. These 1 HP victories for Johnny. I, I mean, it it's still a loss for him because you can tell his XP is starting to fall behind pretty drastically in comparison to Daylo, who hasn't been forced to back. Death Panther, though, doesn't have anything to protect him this time around. Fusify is not in range and easy feather step damage. No jungler being able to help him out. And the problem was Fusify was trying to help out Johnny do those back harpies to be able to get the Bumba's ma mask passive health return back. And as a result, I'm not having the jungler, not having the support. Very easy pick up onto Death Panther. And that's the third kill on the board for Poppies. And again, it, it's just been fairly clean gameplay from Poppies. I was going to say that the, the pacing of the game, I think, could be a little bit faster, but it's up to the Poppies to play that more aggressive standpoint in order to kind of force Burrito into those awkward engagements early on that they don't necessarily want to be taking up. The invades so far from Poppies have been solid. The team fights have been solid. They've been disengaging and engaging appropriately. And really, it, it's just about just steadily poking away. So we've been talking about all the positive and all the good things that the poppies have been done, but if you're Burrito, or specifically maybe even Johnny, what do you do in this mid-game here to get your team back in position? Well, being level 12, he is finally able to pick up that Bracer, which I think is going to help him a significant amount, simply because Feather Step takes away a ton of your health, and Bracer's the perfect active to give it all back. Also having to rely on the cooldowns, maybe could get another Retribution Shield online, but but needing to see when exactly Poppies is going to look for the goal here, because I'm expecting maybe that could be the turnaround factor if Burrito just has one little team fight around this objective. Anything could go their way, especially with this Blink Ultimate. Oof. But yeah, this time it just hasn't been efficient, these Blink Ultimates. Only finding one target last time around on Oho Boom, and then this time, Nilch. Fusify's been placing a lot of emphasis onto this current pick in the mid lane. Speaking of mid lane, Draco forced it to his ultimate yet again, but Morty's just been trying to find the better end of these trades over in the duo lane. I, I think that for Fusify, he just wanted to get that blink ult off because he knew that he was going to be forcing all of Boom into an awkward spot, kind of just hoping that his beads might have been down in that instance to secure the kill. Well, somebody has to make the plays on the side of Burrito, and who better than a Blink Geb and making plays around the goal here. They're actually committing to this, but a Whoop is going to find the reset, even going into the Valkyrie's discretion, trying to poke out Kispainify, forcing out the ultimate himself, but Dale is going to Blink in. Not going to look for the pull, though. And already, Daylo backing off yet again. Sibby's wrapping around this underside, just having to ox form away. Really doesn't want to be in that oh, end. Oh no, Fusify gets swooped, and this is the problem with leaving Afreya alone in the early game. She gets the Fatalis, and there's the power spike, even being surrounded by the rest of her teammates just for good measure. But I don't think Fusify gets away from that one even if none, no one but Warchi is there. He, there was no way he's escaping from that one, especially with that is all being active. Beats forced out of Death Panther as a disapparate form comes through. Unfortunately, ultimate just a little bit too soon from Kree, so Death Panther able to avoid the stun and damage. Same can't be said for Draco, though. He's getting run down by City. Draco did a good job forcing out the beats earlier on, but he might be regretting it, but plucking away into safety. Safety forcing out the ultimate from Sibby. because Painify used this passive to get back into the thick of things as Johnny's trying to look for the flank around the corner. The problem is, though, is that Dalo's back and he's full health as well. So the rest of the poppies are just going to force out Burrito. Johnny really can't come close to that Bologna. Not at all. This level 16 Bologna with mystical male finish also having high of the urchin. So you know Poppies wants to fight, trying to get this item a little bit more tanky. Nice woo from Warchi, but it doesn't matter because Sibi has that 72 transformations. And Warji, though, he does have the Fatalis online now. Secured it immediately after the Bancrofts. He's just been chunking away in these fights. The power spike is real, and so is this Gothier fight. As Fusify gets focused yet again. The get balls first. Johnny to be second. Two easy picks for Poppies. And now, in a five-on-three position, going for the gold. I'm not sure that this is a fight that Burrito want to take out. They're mostly just trying to deter the Poppies from looking for that Gold Fury. And the Poppies, all of them just poked out a little bit more than they would like. So they're going to opt to just fall back from the Gold Fury for right now. 
Team fights are already going so heavily in their favor, though. I can't blame them for wanting to be safe. To me, as long as Poppy's wards correctly around Gold Fury, Portal Demon, Fire Giant, and they don't give those three objectives to Burrito, there's no real comeback potential unless they just dive and freely sacrifice themselves. So Poppies are very clean in their engagements. Now going to start off the Gold Fury at the 19 minute mark with Creed and Dalo trying to look for that zoning. They don't even care about that ward vision that Burrito has available. It's only Kispanify trying to block out the Poppies. Gold Fury is going to go down to the Poppies, though. Kispanify had nothing to do. Couldn't really contest that one around the corner. The ultimate was available, but if you commit the ultimate from a Jing Wei, now you're going to be chased down. But Burrito trying to get something more in return, but it looks like Poppies are prepared for this one. And already it's going to be Sibby as the focus forced up into his ultimate. The Gev Shield came out on him. Draco's already in lurking in the waters, and Sibby's kind of just up in the air. Just forcing out the ultimate from the Summon Kong, making it more difficult than it needs to be for Sibby to try to dive that back line. Dalo going to pick up his speed buff burrito they're feeling confident to go for this one and for good reason fusify had his ultimate to stun everybody out it is going the to go to double, burrito the double pull already coming out so much damage onto burrito they did get the objective but at what cost they're losing two of their members there's no man on death panther the blink from draco marino gonna knock up one as creed is having a boxing battle against Kaspainify. here comes sibby trying to save out his hunter gonna be able to take out creed but losing death panther so three for one poppy still getting the better end of things and the downside for burrito was that that speed buff was also available so Ooh. Poppy's gonna make quick work of that and you could tell already that's that's one of those cheeky lucky backs where you see the enemy team coming you're clenched and just hoping you get out Sibby barely getting out of that one if the whoop was available maybe he could have looked to stop that one but losing the tier one tower taking the portal here it's gonna be Johnny sitting at level 13 still three levels behind his opposition not looking too good for this nemesis jungler I, I like that Burrito at least didn't hesitate, though, and when the call was made to commit, they went through with it. Yes, they need something in return here. They gave up an earlier goal here. They're giving up so many kills on the board, and as a result, you might as well try to look for the goal here. The problem was Poppies didn't really invest into any ultimates around that goal fury, so it was a very easy contest, and just to be able to win that engagement cleanly, only losing Creed and getting three in return, Poppies will take that trade any day of the week if they have to sacrifice that portal demon. And of course, having a little bit more than a 5k gold lead, it's right around 6k gold lead in favor of the poppies, but it's mostly that experience difference that we're taking a look at, really. 6k in XP? That is not a fun time to be around. At the 21 minute mark, it's mostly noticeable here when we're looking at the two junglers and Dalo playing his comfort pick. We were talking about it earlier on in the game. He was being paired up with Draco Marino just roaming around the jungle. And that's what you kind of want to do. You want to have your support, middle, and jungler. Finding a pull onto Sib, he's going to force out the ultimate yet again. This Sun Wukong, without his ultimate, is just... Not really a solo laner, honestly, in these team fights. They're taking away a lot of the front line from Burrito and making it incredibly difficult for Burrito to have that initial engaging factor. And now Ooh, it's going to be whoop. Poppies for it. The whoop into the pull. Actually gets Fusify in a nice position for a double Cataclysm. Draco Marino is going to lurk in the water. We're relying on some of his sustain options to be able to get out of that one with a bracer. But yet again, Poppies, they're very comfortable with taking these engagements. We're looking at their itemization here. They have a height of the Urshan on both Creed and Draco Marino. You know, sitting at four and six stacks respectively. So they're really trying to build this up and get in a better spot in the mid game. For me, is that the Poppies only use two ultimates. We'll make that three now as Sibby gets hit by the Wild Hunt. But Burrito just the looking whoop. for this tower. It's on Kispainify though, but there's no ultimate from Dalo to be able to catch him in the yard. Nice blink trying to pull Johnny, but the Gev Shield's going to buy him a lot of time. It's actually Draco Marino in a lot of trouble as he gets chased down by Death Panther. He's going to fall, but Kispainify dying to Warchi. Nice little Eagles rallying the right hand side. Sibby's going to fall as well. Three for one from the Poppies. And this is all the Poppies wanted to do. They wanted to isolate and separate everybody from Burrito. And that's exactly what's happening. Fusify, all we you needed was one more in hand, and he found it. And now, immediately, straight to Fire Giant. The call is clean from the Poppies. They found four kills. It's only Death Panther here with 
without his supernova to be able to contest this. And just for good measure, Dalo is going to be able to zone away. Unfortunately, knock up onto Warchi. He's actually going to have to go into the sky. But look at that damage. It forces out the Aegis from Death Panther. There's no way that Death Panther survives here. It was a good look from him, though, because it did cause Poppies to reset off this FG, even if only temporarily. So Johnny, if he wanted to, could have a possibility of coming into this one. I don't think he's going to make it. He, he, yeah, he can't make it in time. No That's an way. easy FG for the Poppies. So clean coming out of Poppies here. 14 to 2. They only gave up a portal demon, and they got three members in return here. They sacrificed yet again one member here in that last engagement to be able to get four people. The way Poppies have been taking these engagements just seems like so much finesse. It's almost as if they've been going into like practice modes to be able to, not, not, not even against scrims, right? Just to be able to like, all right, if this happens, we're going to like try to position ourselves here. Because with all the speed buff invades, even being able to defend their tier one mid tower, they don't look like the former challenger circuit team that they did. For me, the big thing was looking at the way that they handled that mid lane fight. They tried to be the initiating factor. It didn't work out. And then they immediately reset and knew that they could defend underneath their tower. And when they aggressed in, in comparison to burrito and this is where you could really tell the big difference poppy stuck together except for their front liner burrito immediately split up into two three separate little directions that they were all trying to run and it seemed more like every man for himself on the side of burrito meanwhile poppies were just moving as a unit oh no creed is going to sacrifice himself on the right because his whole teammates is on the left trying to split push and get that tier two tower using that eagles rally trying to get into that blue buff not going to be enough here but the question is did that death buy enough time to get a clean phoenix here and this is one of the downsides of having Freya as your ADC. Sure, you've got Oho Boom running the Physical Hunter, which is still fairly helpful as far as securing these objectives concerned, but it's not as much damage as you would like to have if you're looking to secure these Phoenixes. Oh, well, nice little blink from Draco Marino. It's going to find help find a pull onto Fusify. Another plug as he's going to use that lurking in the water, but the Geb Shield is going to buy him some more time. Sibi uses his ult just to sustain back up. Another 5 on 4 here for Burrito, but clean disengage from the poppies just waiting for Creed to revive. All they need to do is lock down that T2 tower in the right hand lane, potentially look for the picks, and if they can find the picks, then siege the phoenixes. With this kind of a fire giant advantage, they are, should be able to get this tier 2 on the right hand side, and honestly, if they get no phoenixes from this fire giant siege, it's still a successful one if they get all the towers off the board, because now this puts them in a great position heading into round 2. Not to mention that they won't have to worry about the map pressure it opens up so much map pressure for the poppies and burrito have a lot more they have a lot more to think about if they want to try and contest the fire giant as an objective because they won't have a tower to fall back to and looking forward to their third victory here poppies are putting themselves in a great position burrito are still struggling to find their first victory here in the spl struggling to find the life from warchi just getting absolutely obliterated does get traded out for johnny here but this freya is way more valuable and I already, I, you could tell that there was instant regret in the eyes of the Poppies, but Oho Boom is ready to pick off where, pick up where Warchi left off. Poppy is securing another kill onto Sibi, and that is two in, engaging factors from Burrito. I can't imagine that Poppies are going to want to drop this FG, though, without Warchi being alive. No, not at all, though. However, they still have Fire Giant around their waist for 40 seconds before it fizzles away, and Warchi will be back and available for the respawn. Unless they take another engagement where he loses, his life. I don't expect Warchi to position himself that aggressively again. That's a moment where you're kind of <laughs> feeling yourself, right? He was at the front of the lines, and it, it's a little bit questionable when you go that far ahead. And speaking of questionable, Fusify, that was, that was some risky positioning, but the blank's going to get him out of danger. Four. Unfortunate, though. That's a two-minute cooldown. Fire Giant's respawning in one minute, so this means all they have to do from Poppies is put this Geb into a little bit of combat here, not having to even worry about the potential blink. They can even just try to look for the body block, any sort of slowing mechanisms that they could do, not preventing that Cataclysm from fully affecting all five members of the Poppies as this Fire Giant's about to respawn. I wouldn't be surprised if Poppies just yet again look to get the Awila Shult off onto Fusify. They've kind of just been shred and bursting him down because 
realistically, he, he just fell so far behind as far as gold is concerned. It's been incredibly difficult for him to get the items online that you would ideally like to have as a Geb that make you so tanky. So if the enemy team decides to focus you, then like go ahead. But he, he can't do that in this circumstance. But with Spirit's Robe here, though, with that damage mitigation after getting that crowd control, it seems that he's surviving most of these later game objectives. It worked on in the early game when there was just a lot of damage onto this Geb before his shield was fully maxed. That was very easy to pick him off, but now he's, I feel like he's in a great position here with also the shell to be able to survive at least the initial burst from the poppies. It's just for the poppies, whoever Fusify is dropping his Geb shield onto, they need to immediately switch their target focus and focus somebody else. And speaking of target focus, nobody around to even want to try Try and contest the poppies on this FG. Barino want nothing to do with that fire giant. I think they're more afraid of if they do contest this fire giant and they all die, then they're in a position where they're definitely guaranteed to lose all of their phoenix phoenixes, if not the titan. However, at least now they put themselves in a 5v5 position as they try to defend the right side phoenix. And Poppies, they have so much aggression. They want to go in. There's the plug-in onto Fusify. And already going into lurking in the waters is Draco. He's really afraid of getting crowd control, I think, after the uh, fact. I think he's afraid of that Cataclysm right there, catching him out of position. A nice little double wild hunt. Creed jumping up and down just for the aura. But a lot of damage dealt onto the Poppies. No kills responded, though. Burrito, clean defense thus far from that right side Phoenix. But Poppies, they still want more, and they're not sure if they're going to be able to find more as it's only Sibby still looking to defend this Phoenix. The rest of Burrito, though, backing him up and Poppies are actually just going to kind of disperse. They still have enough time on this Fire Giant buff, right? You're looking at about 2 minutes and 50 seconds. It gives you enough sustain and enough damage on these objectives to be able to kind of poke it down slowly but surely. But without your support here, you're lacking the initiation. You're lacking the peels as well. You'd rather play it safe than sorry. You might as well just go for this Goal Fury, trying to finish off any sort of six items online here. We're looking at Creed here that's probably looking to finish off his Masa Mune. And there's just, oh, you can tell that Poppies need to be a little bit more considerate as far as just trying to face tank all of the damage from Burrito is concerned. Burrito do have a strong enough counter engage with that Nemesis ultimate that if Draco just keeps trying to pluck it all in at one instance underneath the Phoenix, he'll probably end up dying every time because of the Nem. I like the idea that Draco has to be able to blink in, but he shouldn't use his defensive escape to be able to initiate. He should just look for the blink tail flip, trying to set up Delo with a hot pull from his Awailage, and then use that pluck to disengage after the Nemesis shield. I wouldn't even be surprised here. Maybe he needs to switch up his item choices to get a Magi's Blessing to prevent the crowd control reduction, or maybe even go for a Stone of Gaia so after he does get Cataclysm, at least there won't be an additional knockup. I would love to see a, a Stone of Gaia pick up or even the Magi's, but he has other plans in store. Could potentially be looking for that Mantle of Discord, which would also provide him with that CC immunity, even if only for a second. That's that's really all you need. And the fact that it'd be his own mini get -well. That's true. A little stun would definitely help, especially considering how close into the combat he's been. Creed is trying to distract everyone from from Burrito, but maybe a little bit too much there. Even forced to go into the Thorns, it allows Poppies to put a little bit of pressure to the left. A nice little three-man ultimate from Creed, but blinking back in. Fusify gonna find the knockup here. Gonna find a lot of damage onto Creed with that Supernova, but barely able to escape it. This is the damage you have to respect between this late-game Freya and Kernanos. But again, another beautiful hold by Burrito so far. It's really just been Fusify coming up huge on these Geb Cataclysms, and then combining that with Death Panther's ultimate, it's so hard for Poppies to just make a dent into that defense. It seems to me as a challenger team, they haven't had too much resilience or resistance rather whenever they did have a lead. But now Burrito is really putting Poppies through the test. So like, all right, you have the advantage, convert this advantage to a win. And so far, Burrito able to hold all three Phoenixes despite two fire giant attempts thus far from the Poppies. And you know what they say, Taco, sometimes it's uh, third time's a charm, right? But this is still kind of a concern for the Poppies because that... They in-game timer is only going up and the more time that passes in game is also the longer those death timers are going to start happening so if poppies start having some of these unfortunate engagements or finding the worst ends of these team fights they're going to end up with minute long spawn timers and sometimes one to three people on 60 plus second death spawns that's that's really 
really easy to siege down a Phoenix for Burrito. And not only that, there's a difference between a 20,000 gold lead between the 33-minute mark and the 50-minute mark, where your team's basically full build anyway. That's when you're looking at those 3k potions, which still makes a big difference in these engagements. However, it's not as big as where you're looking at four and a half items versus six items out of the poppies. And this is this is time for the poppies to be able to close this one out. As Fire Giant's going to respawn in 20 seconds, they need to convert with some Phoenixes to prevent the game from lasting a little bit too long. The late game potential out of Burrito. We're looking at Nemesis here, and that's going to be a very important factor to not allow to get to that stage. And there's still a, a fairly significant experience gap between these two teams, but that doesn't even matter when you think about it because it, it's level 18s and then a Geb that's level 16, but Geb's going to have his purpose at level 16, and now with the Stone of Gaia available, I think that that's more than enough defensive protections to prevent himself from getting engaged on by this Sobek. And not only that, it's never a good thing here when you're seeing a level 19 Sobek from Draco Marino just being able to out-level three of your own players from a Burrito, but... The cards have been dealt to them, and so far they've been defending in the late game. They should need to be able to learn from this game in terms of like, all right, our early game could be cleaned up a little bit. We didn't protect our speed buffs the way we really wanted to. The damage and rotation from Creed was a little bit too impactful here at that level 2 marker, despite to be being able to secure his own blue buff. It just wasn't a good enough trade here as Poppies are looking to engage on the left side Phoenix with their third Fire Giant attempt. And Burrito, they're more than ready to try and combat it. Already getting the knockout from the Geb, but Creed, he's just jumping in this time, putting so much damage on the Caspanify. He's forced out. Fusify, though, saying can't be set for him. He's going to fall to Warchi. Sibby going to go up in the cloud, trying to sustain it back up. Finally, third time was the charm. They did get the left side Phoenix, their first one of the game. Backing off a little bit, trying to reposition themselves for this middle Phoenix, with Fusify still dead for 40 seconds. Five on four advantage for the Poppies with the Fire Giant. They're looking to get their third win here in the SPL. And the beads are going to be forced out yet again from Death Panther. Well played by <laughs> Draco on this Sobek. And now Johnny all alone, completely decimated. Same can be said for Death Panther by Warchi on that Freya. Delos inside the Titan room. This is going to be Poppies. Definitely feeling himself a little bit too much there diving that Titan, but it's going to be Poppies as Warchi completely melts that Titan. Great performance out of the Spaniards there. All that they needed was that one little gap of Fusify dying, and that really provided the opening for Poppies to really just continue sieging everything that they wanted to from Burrito's base. So I'm looking at that game from Burrito, and I'm looking at the botched engagements from Fusify a little bit, hitting only Oho Boom, hitting nobody that one time down in the mid lane. I feel like as if it hit, if he hit multiple targets there, that game could be completely different from Burrito. I think that it, I, you're probably right in the sense that he really just bit off a little bit more than what he could chew. He was looking for those big plays because sometimes one pick in the early game is really all you need for your team to start snowballing ahead, especially when it's against the enemy's mid laner. Your mid will just get massive, oh, but I... it, it just kind of fell apart when he was unable to connect on those cataclysms. And unfortunately for Burrito, it ended up just falling apart in the end there. Absolutely. Somebody had to engage from Burrito, so it might as well have been him. The blink.